And so we are live. Uh, uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the next edition of Tech to Connect webinar. And uh, this is the 24th edition. And uh, since we have been doing COVID for a long, long time, and we were all quite happy in the recent past that COVID has gone down. But then we have another viral disease which has come up recently. And we would like to know more about, more about that, popularly called monkeypox. But I believe there are there is a more scientific name to that, uh, which we'll understand in a, a few minutes. Uh, my name is Dr. Nidesh Pandari, and I'm very, very pleased to welcome our teacher from Armed Forces Medical College, uh, retired Air Commodore, Dr. P.K. Sushindran, sir, BSM. Oh, welcome, Dr. Sushindran, sir. Thank you. So it's a pleasure having you. And uh, we would love to hear from you about monkeypox. Uh, Dr. Shashindran, sir, was a teacher in, in college and is one of the most patient-centered physicians I've ever seen in my life. And uh, he, he worked on an HIV project earlier where he, he was uh, running a helpline for uh, HIV patients and their families across the armed forces. And now he's, after his uh, retirement from the Air Force, is now joined as the Dean and Professor of Medicine at DY. Partial School of Medicine in Navi, Mumbai. A pleasure having you, sir. We would love to hear up about you and monkeypox. Please, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Nilesh. Can I start? Yes, sir, please. Okay. So this is a color photomicrograph of the monkeypox virus, which was published in Nature in April 2022. And the title of the article was Monkeypox goes global. And uh, so monkeypox virus has been uh, there for a long time in the jungles of Africa. Uh, but for the first time it was discovered in 1958 when there was an outbreak of the disease among monkeys transported to Copenhagen for some lab experiments. And uh, that was when the virus was isolated and it was found that it was a part of an ortho uh, virus, orthopox virus, and it was called as a separate thing related to monkey, uh, to smallpox virus. Now, the first case in humans was diagnosed in 1970 in a nine-month-old baby in Zaire, which is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, the first case outside Africa was reported in the US in 2003, and I'll discuss this a little later. Uh, monkeypox is similar to smallpox in terms of symptom onset, timing, occurrence, and distribution of rash, but it is generally less severe and has a lower case fatality and causes less scarring. Now, uh, the prevalence, as you all have read and know about, is in Central and Western Africa. And even over here, hundreds to a few thousand cases occur every year. Uh, the disease has been tracked since 70s and it is only in the last decade that there has been a sudden spurt in the number of cases. And I will also talk to you about why these cases have gone up. Now, outside Africa, we have had only a handful of cases every year and these are mostly linked to travel to Africa or coming in contact with infected animals, whether they are wild or pet animals. Uh, so now let's just go back and see how they've tracked uh, monkeypox in Africa from the 70s onwards. So in the 1970s, it, most of the cases were in Democratic Republic of Congo, where 38 cases were reported. And a few cases were reported from Nigeria, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Now, when we go to the next decade, between 80 to 90, you find still that the maximum number of cases are in the Democratic Republic of Congo, but some cases have come up in Central African Republic also. Then in 90s, you see that it has now dwindled from all other states and is found in only two states in Africa. One is Democratic Republic of Congo and the other is in Gabon. Uh, in 2000 to 2009, it's interesting to see 
that the number of cases in Congo have gone up to around 10,000 cases. And now it is seen in South Sudan, which is almost Northern Africa. And a first outbreak outside the African continent is reported, and that is in United States of America. And in the US, uh, 47 cases were linked, uh, reported, and this was in 2003. And I'll talk about this in a little detail sometime later. Then uh, you go to the 2010 to 2019, and you find that uh, again that number of cases are in Congo, but what you can see is that they have gone up to 18,788. So there is intense transmission occurring in Congo, and uh, also now for the first time there are cases seen outside in Europe and in Israel. So you have four cases being reported from UK one from Israel and one from Singapore. And all this related to air travel. Now, it is monkeypox is caused by a pox virus, which is a double-stranded DNA virus of the pox viride family. Now, the animal reservoir has not been found. Though the largest animal reservoirs today that we know of are squirrels and pouch rats found in Central Africa and Western Africa. Now, the driver of human monkeypox infection is mainly due to direct or indirect contact with these animals. Now, the contact could be, usually it happens during hunting, skinning, trapping of animals, cooking the animals, or playing with the carcasses or eating animals. Now, some other animals have also been associated with monkeypox, and they include non-human primates, uh, antelopes and gazelles and some tree squirrels. Uh, animal contact usually is reported two to three weeks prior to the onset of rash. Uh, Interhuman transmission uh, rep reproductive rate is uh, only 0.8 and therefore it has not reached an, it did not reach an epidemic proportion in Africa. Now, it's transmitted to people from wild animals, which I told you, in 72% of the cases. And human-to-human -human transmission occurs in 28% of cases. Now, primary routes of infection are large respiratory droplets or direct percutaneous or mucosal contact. And uh, the current epidemic which is being spread between men who have sex with men is because of the direct mucosal and percutaneous contact. Now, primary animal-to-animal -animal human transmission, I've told you, occurs because of touch, bite, or scratch. The vi virus is thought to enter the body through the respiratory tract or mucous membranes. Secondary, human-to-human -to -human transmission is considered common, and it is again through the same two routes, uh, large droplets and direct or indirect contact with body fluids or lesional materials. Now, in hospital settings, contaminated surface or other materials like soil, linen, and clothing can also spread the infection. The secondary attack rate in unvaccinated household members is 9.3, and it is far less than what was known about human smallpox. Now, there has been a slow escalation of cases, especially in Democratic Republic of Congo, and there has been a spread to other countries, mainly by travelers and export of exotic animals both for lab experiments and as pets. Now, medium age at presentation has again changed. In uh, Congo in the 70s and 80s, it was mainly a disease of young children, and the median age was four years. Now it has gone up to 21 years in 2010 to 2019, and now it has gone up by another decade. Case fatality rate for uh, Central Africa, uh, there are two clades known. And one is a Central African clade or the Congo clade and the other one Congo Basin clade and the other is a West African clade. The Central African clade is the more virulent one and causes more severe disease and spreads more. And for that, the CFR is 10.6%. And for the West African clade, it is only 3.6%. Now, this is a picture which is showing how many new countries have been involved in by monkeypox in Africa today. 
Now, the factors associated with an increased risk of infection are living in forested area, male sex, younger age, and absence of smallpox vaccination scar. Now, uh, the risk of getting monkeypox is 5.2 fold uh, lower in those vaccinated compared to those who were not vaccinated. Now, incubation period lasts from 5 to 21 days. And the general time from exposure to fever is 10 to 14 days and exposure to rash is 12 to 16 days. Fever is usually accompanied by headache, backache, malaise and prostration, all symptoms that we commonly see in dengue or chikungunya. But what is specific about monkeypox is that they develop rash and the rash usually starts one to three days post onset of fever. And uh, the interval from fever to rash is shorter in previously vaccinated in individuals because it is an indicator of existing immunity. Now, the rash is usually discrete or semi-confluent and progresses from macular stage to papular stage to vesicular and then pustul pustular stage. And just like in chicken pox, you can have different stages of the rash occurring in different parts of the body at the same time. Usually the rash starts on the face, spreads to the trunk, hands, and later to the legs and feet. An interesting feature of the uh, rash in uh, monkeypox is that lesions occur in the mouth and lesions also occur in genitalia. And probably that is the reason why uh, it has been spread from uh, men who have sex with men. Now, these are photo photographs from Africa showing the postular uh, and the vesicular rashes on the face of a patient. And these are again large rashes seen on the hands and feet of children. Now, the fever falls just like in measles with the onset of rash. Almost 50% of patients will have the cessation of fever. Now, later in the illness, another spike of fever occurs, and this is usually related to postulation and secondary infection of the lesions. And this again lasts for two to three days, and whenever you have a secondary fever, you, it is an indication of severe disease. Oropharyngeal lesions are very common, 76% in the unvaccinated people and 47% in vaccinated people and they manifest as oral ulcers or tonsillitis. Blepharitis and conjunctivitis are seen, again 30% in unvaccinated individuals. Now, one distinct feature of uh, monkeypox is lymphadenopathy, and this helps us distinguish it from smallpox, because in smallpox, you do not get a generalized lymphadenopathy. Lymphadenopathy is seen in almost 90% of people with uh, monkeypox, and the lesion, uh, lymph nodes are quite large, one to four centimeters. They may be tender and painful and usually are seen in cervical or submandibular regions. And sometimes they can be generalized. The clinical course usually lasts for two to five weeks. And if we look at the data coming from Congo, uh, there they have classified the illness as mild, moderate, and severe based upon the number of skin lesions and the degree of prostration. So mild illness is seen only in 11.2% of cases from Congo, moderate illness in 19.3% of cases, and severe disease defined as more than 100 lesions on the skin and requiring intensive nursing care is, uh, accounts for almost 70% of the cases. And this is the reason for the severe morbidity of monkeypox. Now, determinants of severity, as I mentioned earlier, are young age, previous vaccination, poor nutrition, immunocompromised states, and concurrent disease status. There's a very good series of cases of HIV with monkeypox reported from Central Africa. Uh, complications are seen usually are secondary bacterial infections, corneal ulcerations, and bronchopneumonia and respiratory distress, and vomiting and diarrhea leading to dehydration, especially in small children. Now, no complications are observed in more than 90% of survivors, regardless of the vaccination status. And in others, the only two important things we should remember are 
disfiguring skin lesions and blindness and anybody who has had elderly relatives who had smallpox would know about the scarring skin scarring which is seen in smallpox and a similar lesion is seen in monkeypox also now the differential diagnosis is basically lesions which are seen in both skin and uh, on the hand and feet and these include severe chickenpox molluscum contagiosum measles secondary syphilis rocky mountain spotted fever some bacterial skin infections anthrax scabies uh, and erythema multiforme so these are the important differential diagnosis that we need to keep now uh, a, a systemic systematic review of uh, monkey pox in africa shows that 50% of the lesions are mistaken to be chicken pox lesions so that is the most common and important differential diagnosis to keep in mind now uh, to diagnose in most places where the health infrastructure is poor it is based on clinical judgment but today we can prove it is uh, monkey pox by e electron microscopy of samples from the vesicles or exudates and culture from these same samples but the fastest way to do it today is either pcr or sequencing zero diagnosis using paired sera which is uh, uh, acute illness and during convalescent sera uh, shows monkey pox virus specific igm within 5 days and igg after 8 days so in many places where a zero surveillance is done they are doing it based on the monkey pox virus igg uh monkey pox emerged as a human pathogen outside african continent in 2003 i mentioned that an outbreak occurred in Af in the us a shipment of rodents from ghana spread the virus as uh, to pet prairie dogs which were kept in illinois and from there it spread to the neighboring state and infected almost 70 people now most of when we look at what clad it was it is seen that this was related to the west african clad in uh, 2018 human to human transmission was also reported in a healthcare worker in the uk in the week from 13th to 20th may of this year 120 confirmed and suspected cases were reported from 11 countries outside africa and this number exceeds the total number of cases reported from outside africa since 1970 and this was what raised alarm about a new pandemic in the making but who still did not go on to declare it as a pandemic and uh, uh, almost all these cases we are seeing are occurring in men between the ages of 20 to 50 and many of them who were having sex with other men now the main reason for this spread among across the world is the building global immunity against smallpox smallpox immunization was discontinued in the in 1980 and since then you know you have a whole generation of people who have not been exposed to the virus now there might also be asymptomatic infection which is circulating silently in africa and in other parts of the world and this is a worrying thing because we have so far did not know that there could be asymptomatic infection now coincidental introduction of infection in msm is the one which is spreading or the triggering the global outbreak this time uh, the genome uploaded by researchers from portugal on 19th may show that it is similar to the west african strain and is a milder version of the west african strain on 23rd june a uh, world health network has declared monkey pox as a pandemic because on that day there were 3417 cases confirmed across 58 countries now is there any uh, specific treatment in most cases there is no need for any specific treatment supportive care and symptomatic relief is good enough just as we use in chicken pox now important thing is to prevent secondary bacterial infections uh, some antivirals have been uh, uh, tried and they have uh, tecovirimat has been specifically developed against smallpox 
and has also been found to work against monkey pox and it works by blocking the release of intracellular virus from the infected cell sildofovir and brimisidofovir have also been tried and they inhibit the viral dna polymerase so these are drugs which are available and probably should be reserved only for the very sick people now prevention is the most important strategy against spread of monkey pox and important to avoid any contact with rodents and primates now it's easy to say it but in many parts of africa because of civil war and poverty uh, people have no access to meat apart from jungle meat and that is why this infection is still spreading in central africa uh limiting direct exposure to blood and inadequately cooked meat is another important strategy that we should educate people about halting bush meat trade and consumption of wild animals just as we have had in other countries with the covid pandemic where we said that have stop eating wild animals then massive health education campaigns to increase general awareness and just as for any other epidemic viral illness proper pr protection in the form of ppe should be borne while handling potential animal through the wild species or cases now for anybody who has come in contact uh, uh, we, we should in insist on a quarantine for 6 weeks from the day of last exposure and a vigorous contact tracing should be done so that we can prevent uh, unnoticed spread of the infection now smallpox vaccination is still a important strategy if the pandemic becomes uncontrollable and over the last few years new versions of the smallpox virus vaccine have been developed and one is the mouse vaccine ya ankara vaccine and the other is the lc16 m8 vaccine both are live attenuated vaccine the second vaccine is available in a freeze dried form whereas the nba vaccine needs to be cal uh, transported in a cold chain which is a big logistic uh, limitation in poor countries now uh, these vaccines are ag uh, uh, act against both monkey pox cow pox as well as small pox now prior small pox va vaccination results in more than 85% va uh, protection and the strategy to be Uh, um, adopted in containing a pandemic is a ring vaccination strategy so ring vaccination means that you vaccinate all people who have come in contact with a positive case uh, so this is a strategy to prevent pandemics now there has been a movement in democratic republic of congo to vaccinate healthcare workers and they are using a third generation uh, smallpox vaccine which is the nbf vaccine this trial started in 2017 and they are recruiting almost 10000 healthcare workers and two doses are being given one on day 0 and the second dose on day 28 uh, the vaccine has been found to be extremely safe and no side effects have been reported it is uh, the i immune vaccine which is a mva vaccine uh these are the things that are there about the uh, monkey pox uh, all our information comes from detailed studies being done in africa and uh, the all the genomic analysis comes from the military research institutes in the us and in other parts of the world uh i am now willing to answer any questions uh thank you sir for that quick overview of monkey box uh so the first question i would like to ask you was uh is there a real danger of this becoming as big a pandemic as covid maybe not as big as covid but is it really a danger of spreading across the world now okay uh if you remember that the primary mode of spread is respiratory droplets and second is contact with uh, secretions or the discharge from the vesicles through mucocutaneous or uh, uh, oral uh, secretions so now because there is a potential to spread by respiratory drop droplets it can have a pandemic potential 
but what is spreading today is mainly only through men who have sex with men it is in that community and healthcare workers and contacts of those people it is not actually you know we have not had tertiary infections that is a contact of a patient who is now spreading it to another person that has not been noted so it means that the virus is not very virulent mm. and is unlikely to cause a pandemic like covid right so right so i mean we can be kind of slightly more uh, uh, assured that it might it will it wouldn't reach a pandemic kind of proportion see a pandemic is technically defined as an epidemic which has spread to all parts of the world now mm. a disease which has spread to 58 countries could be classified as a pandemic okay but it might not cause suffering and death like covid right sir so we bring to the thing uh, to the uh, question that india i don't think there's a single confirmed case in india yet okay. no case has been reported from diagnose? india yet yeah so is it that we don't diagnose them or yeah, we just don't get these cases around i i'm not able to hear you because of the echo oh right sir uh, my question was uh, do we don't don't diagnose these cases enough or are we kind of uh, less prone to these kind of infections what is it see one is we need to spread the awareness because i told you that the commonest differential diagnosis for monkey pox is chicken pox so we might be still missed diagnosing cases and labeling them as chicken pox but important thing is if we see a severe form of chicken pox with lymphadenopathy and lesions on hands and feet we must suspect monkey pox and send a sample for sequencing um okay uh, that's interesting because a lot of our audience today are pediatricians and uh, any special uh, uh, tips for them because a lot of pediatricians we have today with us so uh, in this current pandemic we find that it is not affecting children it is affecting young adults so uh, that is a heartening thing because the mortality when it affects small children is very high so i think that in this particular spread it is only affecting young adults so pediatrician will not be too worried <laughs> okay sir we also had dentists so i think because of this mouth lesions even dentists were very interested in uh, monkey box yeah right so uh, so uh, you have mentioned the treatment mainly symptomatic and keeping the the patient uh, and the contacts for 6 weeks 6 weeks of quarantine yeah uh, yeah so uh, I, I, those are the those are the main questions i, I had sir and uh, if there are any other questions from the audience i would like to take them i'm just looking through the questions sir yeah and i'll wait right sir so uh, there was this question about a smallpox infection uh, uh, in the past or a vaccination of smallpox giving a protective effect against monkey pox yeah is it because, is it because uh, the, they are they are the blocking antibodies and the neutralizing antibodies are work against all four infections there is something known as uh, smallpox monkey pox cow pox and buffalo pox and it works against all of them so as long as smallpox was active we did not see cases of monkey pox at all because the immunity was there even after smallpox vaccination stopped for a, almost one and a half decades we did not see cases because of the protective immunity of people who had already been immunized against smallpox it was only when we developed a generation of people who were not given smallpox vaccination that we started seeing monkey pox cases right and uh, so and now that now that we have the monkey pox vaccine will it uh, be available to everybody and is going to be uh, a common thing to take a monkey pox vaccine now now the vaccine is still there is no uh, decision on whether we should make monkey pox vaccine available to all uh, what they are saying is this two things uh, one is healthcare professionals who are dealing with monkey pox vaccine 
and close contacts of people who have had of confirmed cases of monkeypox so these are the only two groups of people who actually qualify for vaccine but who has still not uh, published any guidelines on general use of vaccines right sir right right so yeah sir these were the main questions i had and thanks for taking the time on a sunday morning to educate us on on, on this and uh, no it was a pleasure uh, talking to you and uh, yes, i hope it has been useful yes sir definitely because uh, i i believe there's a lot of ignorance amongst even healthcare professionals about monkey pox most of us had no idea because monkey pox was never really a hot topic for so many years now we never really worried about it learned about it we have more, i don't think anyone of us has ever even seen a case of monkey pox ever so the important thing is you know uh, covid taught us how to use ppes and mm. i think the pp is going to be a very important weapon against monkey pox also i guess the pp is going to be a, a a stable weapon in our in our arsenal going forward for decades now uh, we have yeah. that it, i think sir, uh, wearing masks in public space should become part of our culture right sir i, I, I totally agree with that and i actually i have made personal changes myself now i have a whole uh, mask everywhere all over, all over the place and we always use mask now going out meeting people it's become a part of Uh, your shirt, your pant, and your mask. It's like yeah. the whole costume now. So yeah, true. Uh, I want to thank all the audience for attending this very very useful short but very useful webinar on monkeypox. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, have a great day ahead. Hope to see you around very soon. Thank you very much, Nilesh, for the opportunity. Bye bye. Thank you, sir.